Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we set up the basic function of the uh, interaction world. In other words, now we can detect intersections. We have the basis of collision detection. But we don't have interactions yet. That is going to be the topic of this video. Let's get to it. So, first thing we're going to do. We're going to go to interactionworld.hpp and we're going to create our interaction class. So, this is just going to be a straightforward class with a public and private section. So how do we define interaction? We actually talked about that in the video where we went over, oh yeah, this diagram. An interaction is just going to have a list of components to define what the interactor is and what sort of objects that will interact with, and some virtual function for the interaction itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of UN32, and the way this is going to work is a lot like ECS system. So remember in ECS system, we have just this array of component types. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So except I'm going to call it interactor component types. There you go. And we're going to have another list for the interactee component types. And this is how we'll identify it. And much like we have here, we're going to have a protected method to define, well, how to add a component type. So it's going to be void add interactor component type, which takes in a uint32. And this is going to do, oh, I forgot to name it. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, let's call it type. And this is going to do exactly what you think. Interactor component types dot push back. Oh, I believe that for some reason. There you go. Type. And we're going to have the same sort of thing for interact E. Interact E component types. There you go. So this is the most basic representation. This defines what sort of objects we want to include in this interaction. And then at the public part, all we have to do is create the virtual method, which is going to, again, work a lot like ECS system. So this is going to be some virtual void function. It's going to be called interact. It's going to take in parameters similar to the update components in base ECS system, but it's going to be a little different. You'll see. So we'll need the delta still. We still need to know how much time has passed since the last, well, frame. So yeah, that will be the delta for how we're supposed to update. We also need, like before, this list of components, but we actually need a second list. We need one for the interactor components and the interact components. And between these, this should be enough to specify our interaction. With that, the next thing we need to do, of course, is store these somehow. So this is very straightforward. We're just going to have an array of interaction pointer that I'm going to call interactions. Simple as that. And we're just going to have a basic inline void add interaction, which takes in an interaction pointer, interaction, and which does exactly what you think it's going to do. Interactions dot push back interaction. There you go. So now we have a list of all the interactions, but we need to actually use those interactions when there's an intersection detected. So for example, well, not for example, what it, where it is, <laughs> is interaction world process interactions. We detect if an entity is overlapping with another's collider. If it is, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened there. If it is, we need to see if there's an interaction between those entities in our interactions list, and if so, apply it. This is where things get a little bit tricky. Because think about what's happening here. Right now, at this point in the code, we have a couple key pieces of information. We know there is an intersection, and we know what the interactor is and what the interactee is. The problem with this is given that information, we then want to determine what set of interactions, if any, is valid. What interactions occur between them. 
and preferably we want to do that as fast as possible. And unfortunately, as fast as possible probably doesn't mean iterating through this big array of every single interaction in the entire game world, which could easily constitute thousands of different interactions. So we're going to take a slightly different approach. We're going to change the way we're storing entities so it's easy to find this information. So to do this, I'm going to add a private struct that I'm going to call entity internal. There we go. And this is going to be a, it's going to have the entity handle, just like before, because ultimately this is going to replace our entities array. It's not just going to be an array of entity handles anymore, it'll be our internal representation of an entity. But we're not just going to have the handle, of course. That's why we're changing it up. What we're also going to have is a list, array of UN32, that I'm going to call interactors, and also an array of UN32 that I'm going to call interactees. And the way this works is very simple. Let's say my interactors array is something like 1, 3, and 7. Then I know that this entity is an interactor for interactions 1, interactions 3, and interaction 7. You know, whatever interaction is at that index in this interactions array. So that's how this is going to work. And that way, it'll be very quick to determine what entities are and aren't interactors or interactees when we find an intersection. That's the idea. But this does mean we're going to need to change our code up a bit. Namely, we're going to need to change our interaction rule compare, which, come to think of it, should probably be a uh, private struct, so I'm just going to change that up. I don't think it matters too much, but, you know. So, excuse me, I'm having some trouble tabbing. There we go. And yeah, the big thing we're going to do here is just change it so instead of taking in an entity handle, we're taking in entity internal. And actually, this should probably come first since this uses it. I actually don't think that would cause a compiler error, would it? No, actually, I think it would, because, that, yeah, that's still multiple definitions before usage. It's still definition before usage, even if the definition is within the class. So this should... yeah, whatever. <laughs> the point is, this should work, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, anyway, we'll just change it to a.handle and b.handle. And voila! We should be doing the same general thing. Just, you know, now it handles our new entity internal class, which is what we want. We're also going to need to change up a number of things. Of course, add interaction, we'll need to to, to do update entities to handle the new interaction, which you might think, oh no, this is going to be a huge problem. We have to update every single entity every time we add any interaction. But this is actually okay, because... Overall, you're not expecting to add a lot of interactions during the course of your game running. You know, you might add one or two interactions here or there, maybe, but you're going to be processing interactions every single frame. So the trade-off makes sense. And we're also going to need to change up these methods so that they set up the entities correctly. So, in fact, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to add a method called addEntity, which takes in an entity handle, which is called handle, and there. That's just going to make adding entities a little bit easier because it will encompass all the code in a single method. So our old type of add entity method implementation, just to do what we're doing right now, all we have to do is this, push back the handle. That is our effective add entity right now. Of course, we need to change this. This is not going to cut it. So what I'm going to do as I'm going to create an entity internal called entity, so entity dot handle equal to handle, and we're we're ultimately going to push back this entity. Now this is also going to mean we're going to need to compute the interaction. So in fact, I'm just going to leave a note here to do compute interactions. But yeah, this is a general idea. This makes our lives a little bit nicer when doing that. So, before we get too far into that, though, well, I mean, I might as well use it to begin with, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. So, on make entity, now just calls add entity. On add component, uses add entity. So that solves that. That's that part of the problem solved. The other part of the problem is entities to remove. 
We do have a method that handles this, but now we need to change it a little bit to make it work correctly. Specifically, right here, we're saying entity sub i, we need to compare the handles of these. So yeah, other than that, swap remove is okay. Swap remove will do the correct thing, it's just we have to be careful that we're using the handle here. And that should be most of the major things going on that we need to take care of before we just go into the world of computing the interactions. So as far as interactions go, we're going to create one method to be sort of the workhorse. This will be compute interactions. This is going to take in an entity internal reference, entity, and it's also going to take in an index in the interaction array. So in fact, I should probably call this interaction index just to make it a little bit more clear. And what this does, very straightforward. Given a single entity, it determines whether it interacts with one particular interaction in this array. And if so, well, yeah, that's the, the idea. We're just determining if it matches a given interaction. So I'm going to go up here out of the compute interactions method. It's going to be an interaction world. And what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to go to the interaction index. So I'm going to say interaction pointer interaction equals interaction sub interaction index. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this interaction's interactor component types and interactee component types, which, by the way, I apparently forgot to create a getter for. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a const array viewint32 reference that I'm going to call get interactors and get interact. These, or rather, I should call it get interactor components. That makes more sense. Yeah, that's much clearer what that means. Okay. Yeah, this is just going to return this. Same thing here. Not too much to say about this. Very simple getters. But the way we're going to use this is like this. I'm going to create a for loop. It's going to go through everything in our interactors component, all of our interactor components. That size, i++. Plus plus. And I forgot to say i is less than this. Excuse me. That's fine. And the way we're going to do this is simple. We're going to see does our entity dot handle, yeah, entity dot handle, we're going to do ECS get component by type at, at this handle with, with this component, whatever interactors components sub i is. Because this will give us the ID. So we'll take the handle and the ID. And if this is not equal to null, then we know, hey, this entity has the component. So that's the sort of the logic here. But actually what we're going to do here is we're going to test if it is equal to null. Because if it is null, that means we don't have a component that's necessary, and we know, okay, this entity is not an interactor, and we can get out of there here. So I'll say, just have a quick boolean, say bool is interactor, which starts off equal to true. If we don't have one of the components, we know, hey, we're not an interactor, and we can just break out of the loop. And we're going to do a very similar piece of logic for interactees. So the only difference is we're going to go through the interactee components. So there you go. Whoops. Through the interactee components. If one of them's null, we know is interactee is false. There you go. And finally, once all that is done, all we have to do is say entity dot, what did I call it? Interactors. Yeah, very simple. If is interactor, then entity dot interactors push back interaction index. Bam. And same thing here for interactee. Just copy and paste that check. If is interactee, push interactees 
pushback interaction index. There you go. There's just one small thing missing with this. And that's the fact, uh, wait a minute, we don't have this get component by type method. Because for some reason, I forgot to add that to ECS when I did that. That's okay, it's a very small thing. It's very easy to do. So this is going to return a base ECS component pointer. Get component by type takes in an entity handle entity takes in a uint32 component type. I'll just call it component ID actually. Sure. And this is going to be pretty much the same sort of logic we have for get components, just we can't assume the type anymore. So this no longer needs a cast because it is a base ECS component pointer. Unless I'm very much mistaken, but I'm pretty sure get component internal returns that. It does. Good. Handle to entity is still correct. We just replace component colon ID with component ID. There you go. And just like that, now we have a way of computing interactions. And at this point, we have a couple of syntax errors. I forgot interaction arrow get interactor components dot size and same thing for interact D. I forgot a semicolon right here and I also forgot to update these with the fact that hey entity sub i not an entity handle anymore we have to say entity sub i dot handle to get access to the handle so yeah just minor syntactical things shouldn't be too terrible so same thing over here and that should be everything. I'm going to do another test build. And I apparently still don't have it correct. Okay. What? Ah, I forgot. I just, a couple more places I forgot the interaction arrow. Okay, interaction arrow this. There we go. Now it should be everything. And we build and run just like before. Our program still looks exactly the same, but it won't be too long now before we can start adding interaction into this 3D world. We have the core piece here that computes what, inter what entity will interact with whatever types of entities and what sorts of interactions. But what about putting it together? Will there be more hidden twists along the way? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget there is an awesome Benny Discord that you are welcome to join, and you can get early access to videos if you want to become a patron on Patreon. Special thank you to all my patrons listed in the video description for being amazing, and I will see you all in the next video.